Bonjour tout le monde. Donc on va partir en Afrique du Sud, dans la région du Cap, euh, que vous connaissez certainement. Comme vous savez, la, la plupart des vignobles en Afrique du Sud sont concentrés dans cette région qu'on appelle le Cap Occidental ou le Western Cape. Et aujourd'hui, vous allez voir, nous allons aller vers le Swartland. Alors là, vous avez une image aérienne. This is a picture taken from the plane by Andrea. Et ici, vous voyez, euh, vu d'avion, euh, les, les, les trois principales montagnes du Swartland. Donc là, vous avez ici le Pardeberg, où il y a la, la ferme de Hadi. Vous avez à, à une trentaine de kilomètres cette deuxième chaîne montagneuse qui est euh, le Castilberg. Et vous avez euh, beaucoup plus loin, au nord, en allant vers la Namibie, vous avez le Picketberg. Did I get my mountains right, Adi? Yeah, perfect. You've got it. I've got it. That's right. So this, donc voilà une, une carte de l'Afrique du Sud, une carte viticole de l'Afrique du Sud. Ici, vous avez la ville du Cap, le Cap de Bonne Espérance, le Cape of Good Hope. Um, ici, l'océan entouré de l'océan Atlantique. Et vous avez ici en rose sur la carte uh, le Swartland avec la ville principale du Swartland qui est, le, qui est Malmesbury, qui est une ville, on va dire, un peu far west, où la plupart des vignerons se, se retrouvent pour une bière ou plus. Donc nous allons beaucoup parler du Swartland, des, des sols granitiques du, du Pardeberg au fur et à mesure que nous allons déguster. Donc malheureusement, comme on ne peut pas visiter Adi dans sa ferme, we, we cannot come and visit you because of this bloody virus thing. No. So, um, um, a quick video. So this is the map of the mountain. So this is a video, I'm, I, I'm hoping that you can all see it. Uh, this is a little bit of a tour of the... On va faire un petit tour dans, dans la ferme de Adi. Donc la ferme s'appelle Calmus Fountain. Uh, comme vous le voyez, c'est un endroit uh, assez beau, même uh, magnifique. Uh, une zone assez aride, où, mais où il y a beaucoup de choses qui poussent. L'hiver, les... c'est le début de l'hiver là-bas et uh, tout est déjà assez vert. Uh, et là, vous voyez donc la granitique du Pas de Bug et donc la, 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 la ferme de, de Hadi. Là, vous avez un petit uh, survol de la ferme. So this is the drone flying over your cell. Yeah. Um, vous avez au premier plan donc uh, les chais du domaine. Et vous voyez déjà un petit peu à l'arrière les, les vignobles. Uh, uh, voilà, vous, alors sur cette, sur, cette, uh, sur cette ferme, beaucoup de vieilles vignes de chenin, de grenache, de cinceau. Un endroit uh, assez chouette avec euh, toujours un, un très bon un accueil de Hadi et de son équipe. Euh, là, je, le son est coupé, mais c'est Hadi qui vous fait visiter les chais. So this is, uh, we have two Hadis on screen. It's, it's amazing. So this is a visit of, uh, of your, uh, of your cellar, the infamous clean uh, concrete tanks. <laughs> For uh, food stomping, c'est là qu'on foule les raisins uh, au moment des vendanges. Uh, so, uh, so Adi, maybe a, a quick introduction. Uh, so you bought this farm, but this farm had a life before, right? It was running, it was built, what, in the 19th or 20th century? Or? Yeah, roughly. Um, uh, the farm uh, originally was set out... Uh, As a, as a farm in 1702. All right. Yeah, so a long, long time ago. We uh, still had kings. The, I think the Dutch were here, you know, the Dutch were here in the CAC. The Dutch were always causing, causing trouble, yeah. Um, yeah, so, the, so it was, it's a very old farm, but the, but the calf, the, the winery, was uh, established in the early uh, 1900s. So the winery is probably just over 100 years old um, this year. And uh, we bought the property in 2007. 
uh, and I moved there with my wife and my young son. And uh, yeah, we, we, we farm grapes and make wine in a very, um, I must say in a very, very uh, uh, simple way. Um, as you can see, the winery is very basic, um, but uh, the, the plants are amazing. They're really, really good plants. Okay. So that was a, a quick virtual tour of the farm. Yeah. Hopefully soon we'll all be able to travel again. From the, from the top, it looks a bit, uh, you know, I never see it from that level. I always see it on the ground. Um, on, on, on that level to see it from down is, it's, it's amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, yeah. The, the farm is 140. So we're taking questions as well as we speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the, yeah, so the farm is a, there's a question of uh, the, the previous owner was making wine or selling uh, the grapes, selling, selling I grapes. think, to the co-op. But the owner before him made wine in the 1940s for the last time in 1948, because what happened in 1948, the, the big cooperative opened in the region and then all the farmers took their grapes to the cooperative and all the small sellers closed. Uh, when we bought this one, the, the tanks were still in you know, average condition. Um, so it was easy to just make wine again. Okay. And we, we, we farm now 75 uh, hectares um, of, of, of bush vines uh, under dry land uh, with uh, many, many different varietals. You know, we've got a lot of experimental, experimental grapes, uh, but the main varieties is, of course, uh, uh, Stien, uh, um, uh, Chenin Blanc, um, and then, you know, Grenache Blanc, Grenache Gris, Vitello, Viognier, Semi, a lot of different grapes. And on the red side, it's mainly Shiraz, Sinso, um, and Grenache. Okay. And um, so, so just for, for, for everybody who's on the call, um, you make a lot of wines. Uh, you make also things that are, that are not classified as wines. <laughs> Yeah, we make uh, we make a lot of lot of uh, we make a lot of wines. Um, we make a lot of um, wines under under floor as well, and um, we make uh, obviously uh, quite a few wines um, and, and under different labels. Uh, on the screen is two of them: the the Secateur uh, Chenin Blanc and uh, and uh, the Red Blend or Manier of Sansa Shiraz and Grenache. Um, mm -hmm. And then we do some single vineyard wines as well, you know, of very beautiful parcels of grapes. Um, yeah, these are the two Appalachian red and whites, and uh, we're going to taste both of them this evening. Um, there you go, those are the single vineyards. Uh, Chenin, so Stien, uh, Chenin Blanc, is Chenin Blanc in, uh, in Afrikaans, it's the word for Chenin Blanc. And then uh, we're tasting the, the two reds, the Sinsa and the Grenache from the single vineyards. Cool. So mm -hmm. um, what I suggest is that we get started. We have uh, six wines to taste. So, so, um, so we're going to start with the uh, family white. Um, so all of you, if you, if you have your glasses, uh, let me show you the, this is a, uh, so this is what the, the bottle looks like. Um, so this family white is, uh, has a very interesting thing. I think the label behind it is, is too small for all the grapes that you use for this. So, so what's the story behind this, be, behind this wine? Uh, Rafi, when, when, when my wife and I uh, bought this property, uh, we just wanted to make two wines, one white and, and one red of all the varieties uh, on the on the farm and uh, this white blend is a, a blend of all the varieties but you know they're all picked together at the same time 
Um, and it's a blend of Chenin Blanc, uh, Grenache Blanc, Grenache Gris, Grenache Noir as well, Semillon Gris, Semillon, you know, the normal Semillon, uh, Vionnet, Vitello, de San yep. Palomino, a yeah, little bit of Colombar, Barsan, Roussan, you know, everything that's picked together. Um, and every year we, we use the same vineyards. Um, it's fermented in a in, in, in wooden foudre, a natural ferment, and then after one year it goes into to, to beton uh, tanks for another ten months, and then it's bottled when it uh, when it is clear. And that's the story. It's just a just a picture of of our farm. Um, the wine is not very. Yeah, it's not the the components are not blended later. You know, it's just picked together. We look at a at, a, at an overall picture of, of, of the vintage and decide to pick. Um, but it, to be honest, it takes longer than one day to pick everything. So we pick this 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 blend over three days. With some of it's high up in the mountains and difficult to get there and very steep. Uh, so some of the vineyards take a lot longer to bring to the cellar. And that's it. It's just uh, I don't know, Rafi. I mean, we've you know, every, every winemaker talks about the terroir and talks about um, all these things, but, but winemakers have got a massive impact um, on the resulting wine. Um, and it's very difficult. It's been very difficult for us to, um, to make this wine because um, we only make one decision, only one decision, and that's the decision when to pick. Uh, because the fermentation is, occurs by itself. And then the other decision is when to bottle. Um, and it's completely reliant on the vintage and, and, and the flavors that we, that we taste in the, in, in the vineyard at that time. There's no recipe, there's no, I don't know, we, we, are, we, are, we are farmers, to be honest. We are farmers. Um, and this is a, a farmer's blend, a vineyard's blend. Yeah. No, no, indeed. And, uh, no fussing around. No, uh, the wine is not fine, it's not tweaked, there's no, no things added because we want to make something that we think is authentic. And that is a very good picture of what we do. The wine is not perfect by any means. Huh? You know, my neighbors make much more perfect wines. Like Evan Sardi, um, Chris Molyneux. You know, the wines are perfect and they're really well made. And from a winemaking point of view, ours are perfect from a farming point of view and, 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 what, and, and what we want. Not, not from a winemaking point of view. Ah, yeah, you're too humble. Uh, they're, 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 they're not too dodgy either. <laughs> it's, it's like that, you know. <laughs> and um, so 216, so this vintage was, was the beginning of uh, the, the drought years, now we're calling them. Uh, it was the yeah. moment where yeah. 16, uh, 17, 18. Yeah, so when, when you must remember that when, when you talk about 2016, for a South African wine, you're actually talking about the summer of 2015. Correct. You know, with, with we are growing season is from August, September, that's budding. So yeah. when we say 2016, we're actually talking about the summer of the previous year. So we're talking 2015 and it started getting very dry, you know, very low precipitation. But because these vineyards are old, um, and because they've got low crops, I mean, we're talking 7, 14, 20, 28 hectoliters per hectare, you know, on average on the, on, on the old vines. Um, yeah. Old vines and on the granitic soils, they've got quite deep roots, um, enough leaves, uh, a nice balance of bunches to, to get some ripeness without too much stress. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. 20. 2018, which is a 2017 vintage, was, was very, very dry. But, but, but 2016 was, was a very nice vintage. 
The wines show nice freshness, nice nervousness. Um, obviously, this is a 2016 white wine, so it's it'll start showing those tertiary characters, a bit blousey, a bit waxy on the palate, which is which is what I like, you know. When I worked for, yeah. for Al Andreo down there many years ago, you know, you drink those old uh, white Hermitage. He was a big fan of that, and you drink these old wines, and I love that texture and that weight on the palate, you know. And this wine, these wines yeah. age to some extent. And um, so there, there's a question from, from the group. They're asking if, uh, if the grapes are destemmed for your white. Uh, no, or it's not. whole bunch. Uh, we we didn't we didn't have a destemmer then. Um, <laughs> we we've bought a destemmer now uh, in 2019, but uh, this is all whole bunch pressed. The grapes are cooled overnight, and then pressed uh, the next day. But all whole bunches, uh, and directly into tank. Uh, no 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 debobage. Just straight into tank uh, for fermentation. Uh, we do rack after fermentation off the off, off the big lee and leave the fine leaves with the wine for for two years. Mm -hmm. And um, so full, full, uh, full malolactic, I think. I don't know. I think so. Um, full yeah, maybe. Probably. Um, yeah. And um, so, so what is it in your wines that uh, the white wines, the family whites, are, uh, are are very interesting to me? I've always loved them. They're not always the easiest ones to sell because they they I find them in their youth. They're not necessarily um, grown ups or you know they they're still kids, and it takes a couple of years for the white blend to to come together. Uh, so that's why I wanted everyone today to taste a 16. Listen, we have tasted a. Listen, man, I think it's very, very difficult to sell a white blend. You know, our, our biggest market is 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 in Europe and, and North America and places like that. And the world, the world has only planted Cabernet, Merlot, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. That, that, that's what's planted throughout the world. Those are the big five. And, and to sell a white, a white blend from South Africa is very, very difficult. But um, we, we believe in this wine and we, but you know, but, but we believe more in, in our place. And we produce a small amount of this wine each year. And, um, you know, slowly it's taken a long time, but we've got a very nice uh, following of this wine. Um, so every year we, we sell the 7,000, 8,000 bottles we make. It's a tiny amount. Um, and that's all we can make yeah. because the vines are just that size. Um, but yeah, to sell a white blend is very, very difficult, especially in its youth. As you say, this wine is very nervous in its youth. Um, and then when it, uh, um, you know, when, 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 when it gets a little bit older, um, it changes a lot. I see there's a, there's a question from, from Jerome about the, the peak of the wine. Uh, Jerome, I think it, it, it depends um, quite a lot on the vintage, you know. Um, 2016 um, was a very, very, for me, a very nervous wine in the beginning. Uh, when I look at the red uh, vintage, I think it's, it's got some time still. Um, some of the... It's funny the in South Africa that even even years for the last ten years have been wines that can age for for a long time in that and uh, for the odd years are wines that are that are that are, that are peaking sooner. Um, but I would you know this this wine is generally drunk within the first five years of release by far. You know people, yeah. especially in South Africa. Um, South Africa is a, a funny nation, you know, when it comes to wine. Rafi, you know, you spent a lot of time here. It is now um, May 2021. South Africans can't wait for the new Sauvignon Blanc 2021. When a Sauvignon Blanc or a white wine is older than a year or two, they get very, very nervous, you know. 
um, in the general public. But, um, you know, where we sell these wines is a great appreciation for the way they can age. Indeed, yeah. I don't know if that answered. Fantastic. And uh, ho yeah, yeah. hopefully um, one of those days, uh, every year I keep uh, a batch of your wines. I built my own little library here. So hopefully uh, one day we'll be able to, to do a vertical tasting in Paris. That would be really nice. Yeah, that will be done. Can, we, can we, we have done it recently, um, and it's very, very interesting. Huh? Our first vintage yeah. is 2007, um, and uh, that wine is, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit tired, to be honest, you know, <laughs> um, but it is 13 years on. You know? Now for sure. So let's move to the uh, to the single vineyards. So as you as you said, when when you and Cornelia moved on the farm, you just wanted to make two whites, one white and one red. Yeah. Uh, what happened for you to for you to uh, start making single vineyards? Was it an influence? Uh, was it you waking up one morning? Was it uh, what <laughs> happened? No, Rafi. You know we. Uh... We were working with these, with these, you know, I work with um, Shannon Blanc. I've got 46 different parcels that I work with. Uh, 46 different parcels, some, some very small, uh, some bigger. And um, there were some vineyards that were just each year that showed a different expression or personality. Um, they showed better the, the geography of, of where they were from or the, the way they, that, that geography affected the way they grew. Um, so we bottled them. So these two vineyards, we're tasting, of course, now different vintages. So different vintages from different vineyards. Um, but if you can just, just imagine, um, Pete Bok, Boss, Shannon Blanc, their vines are very big vines. Uh, they're 50 years old. The soils are very, very deep. The soils are six meters before we get to the rock and the clay. Six meters. So deep, free-draining soils, big, big vines, and they get runoff. Uh, it's, it's in the valley floor, so they get runoff, so they, they're very vigorous. Um, and a dusty cup is the vineyard high up in the mountain. Uh, much smaller vines. Uh, less soil, more granitic rock. So smaller bunches, smaller vines, uh, more, more, more sun, deeper yellow in color. Um, and they're, they're treated exactly the same. A whole bunch pressed into uh, barrels, uh, 1,200 liter food for fermentation and then bottled after one year. Okay. And um, so maybe you can, uh, I know you explained this to me before, but you have your own uh, rating system of, of uh, tiers. How does that work? No, uh, I mean, it, it, it started when I, went, when I took a Frenchman uh, up the mountain uh, to, to, to Dassy Corp. Um, a very good friend of mine, a guy called uh, Vincent Karem, you know Vincent Ruffy um, from Tours, yeah, Vincent and uh, so Vincent's wife and I are very good friends. I've known her all my life. And I've, of course, met Vincent through that. And I took Vincent to the Dasi Corp vineyard, high up in the mountain. It's, it's these, these fingers that go into the mountain, into, the, into, the, into what Feinbos, you, you call it Garib, but we call it Feinbos, into the mountain. And, um, and Vincent is very emotional because he's French. Um, but, uh, but he, he, started, uh, he started crying a little bit. He had some tears. And um, then I decided that I'm going to classify all my vineyards according to the tears of Vincent. Um, so it's uh, three golden tears out of three is, is, is what, what these vineyards are rated. It's an emotional rating of a vineyard because, because that's what it is at the end of the day. You know, we... As winemakers, as farmers, we work with these incredible places, and these, and this is, and, and sometimes when you walk into a vineyard, there's just a, a very different energy and a, and a vibration in that vineyard, um, and that that that's that's why we bottle these vineyards on their own. 
because they they've got a really direct uh, impression and personality. Fantastic. Um, so Vincent says hi. By the way, he he oh. might be connected. I'm not sure, but uh, he was he trying to. Know. He doesn't know how this works. He doesn't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so you said Pete Pete Bock. So and so Pete Bock has this big Shannon um, shoots. Uh, yep. how, how is Dusty Cop? Is uh, much smaller bush vines and uh, so, so, so the pit book is just big vines. So, we, so when the people talk about pruning, and when we yep. prune, we don't say we're going to prune uh, the vines. We're going to prune the trees. Very, very big vines, big bunches. So a bit more on the fruit, a bit more on the granadilla, um, sometimes green apple uh, sort of sort of aromatics. Um, but all you know, because it's granite, we all know that granite plus grapes equals uh, freshness in a way. Um, I hope the Dusty Corp has finished fermenting. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier. Um, because, you know, the, the fermentation on this wine took uh, your, about 16 months to finish. Um, it might have finished uh, on its way to, to Paris. Uh, on the boat? Uh, on the boat. Um, yeah, it's just, so, so Chenin Blanc is an amazing grape for us here in South Africa. It's an incredible variety. It's, it's the best thing that, that the French, Dutch, you know, the Huguenots could have brought to South Africa, Chenin Blanc. So versatile, mm -hmm. uh, so well adap ad adapted to our conditions. Um, it makes really pleasurable wines, wines that people can understand, um, wines that people can share. And you can talk about, you discuss, and they give you um, so much complexity as they age as well. Indeed. So, so the third, um, so there's peat bog as a as a single vineyard. So these single vineyards, by the way, it depends on the year. Some sometimes they're no. blended into something else, so it's it doesn't necessarily happen every year. And the volumes are pretty yeah. small, right? The volumes are. Uh, uh, Tiny. Sun, 1, 1,200 liters. <clears throat> yeah. Each. Very, very, very small vineyards, you know. And um, and every year, we, we, they're not bottled every year, you know. We bottle different single vineyards um, as the years go on. Because we've got a lot of these amazing um, Shannon vineyards. But Rafi, you know, you know what my plan is? Oh, tell me. Uh, tell my us. Plan, my plan... And we've been doing it for the for the for the last three years here in the winery, is to make a, a fantastic blend of every single vineyard on the farm. Um, we started off uh, in 2019 with the, with the, with the first. Uh, it's a blend of you know white and red, but mostly red grapes. Um, you know, also just picked together, um, but it is so promising that this blend, which is a perfect, is the, the, the perfect thing from, from this place. You know, it's, it's obviously very tempting to bottle these amazing single vineyards and, and a white and a red. Um, but every single vineyard together is really, really exciting. So, um, you know, next time you're here, we can, we, we can taste some of those, um, some of those wines. That would be fantastic. And uh, so the, the third white wine that we're drinking, which is the Dasi Cop uh, Steen or Chenin Blanc. Yeah. Um, so that was the first, was that the first ever year for single vineyards or I can't oh, remember. Yes, of, of, of this wine, yes. This yeah. wine, yeah. You were doing single vineyards before, yeah. Yeah, that's correct, of this wine first. So the Dasi Cop is, is a little bit higher, at high altitude, small berries, a little bit more, a little bit more tannin, a little bit more grip in the wine, um, and obviously it's got um, it's got these amazing uh, textures on the palate. You know, it's the weighty and it's textural, um, but still, still um, with that um, that kind of freshness. And it, and it's a very good um, look. This this vineyard is amazing. It's just a perfect vineyard that is very uh, much part of nature 
Um, and it's a vineyard that doesn't get a lot of attention. It's a, it, it lives on its own up in the mountains. Um, it's just during the pruning and the and the spraying time that we are there to to help. Um, but the rest of the time, it's on its own in seclusion up in the mountains. So when it when it when it when it comes down from the mountain and it comes to the winery, it's a it's a it's a, it's a big moment for everybody when these when these grapes arrive because they got amazing flavor, amazing textures. Um, and, uh, it's always nice there, if, the, if the animals don't eat everything. You know, there's a lot of baboons up in the mountains there. Um, yeah, yeah. So they usually have good taste. The South African baboons. <laughs> they have a very good taste. <laughs> They've got expensive taste, huh? <laughs> Indeed. And um, uh, there, there's a question from the group. They they. Um, I think it's Sophia is saying there's a lot of complexity in this single vineyards, as well as on the family white. Is, is this the granitic soils giving that complexity, or is it the the, the dodgy winemaking, or wh where is it coming from? No, Rafi. I mean, if, if there's anything complex, it's certainly not from the winemaking. Um, <laughs> uh, certainly not 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 anything from from our side. Um, I honestly believe, you know, these wines are very, very honest wines. They, they are not, we, we don't, we don't bottle a wine to be showy or expressive. We bottle a wine to be what, what the vineyard is, you know, and how to build it. So, I mean, it, it's really nice to hear that, uh, that the wines are complex and they've got texture because, because, the, because the vineyards do have that. And because the vineyards have got that, it's nice to, see that you know, people other than myself um, can recognize that, you know, in the, in the wines. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, it's, um, for, for me, I, I, I was blown away when I, when I first taste, tasted your wines, because uh, I, I think they come across uh, like wines of great personality and they speak about the place and uh, there's a complete I would say match between what you feel and what you smell and sense where you're on on your farm and when you drink the wine even if you are miles away three continents away or whatever and 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 that has always uh, been something quite magical to see that uh, there's there's true authenticity in these wines, as you said. They're not necessarily perfect. You're never yeah. gonna get a hundred points from from yeah. Tim or from Neil, but uh, but but they they just they just um, they just make people vibrate. Yeah, I, look, I mean, I, yeah, I, I I I really like what you're saying, and it's a it's, it's a compliment. Um, and that, that, that's what we are trying to do, you know, we're not trying to impress anybody, we're just trying to show what, show what, show what there is. So, so I have a question for you, so you have a lot of white varieties on the farm and you use yes. them for the blends. Um, so obviously Chenin is, is, is the queen, uh, who, who's the troublemaker? Which, which white grape is always giving you a hard time? <laughs> um, the grape uh, that 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 for us is 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 um, um, difficult uh, because everything we we do everything on on, on goblet uh, yep. and keep pruning and so so the one grape if you if you're doing bush vines the one white grape that is very difficult um, to grow and to make a a nice shape and a form is uh, is is Fidelo. Fidelo is very difficult. It, it, it falls open and then flops around, and it's very sensitive to the wind. Um, and the problem is, it's very early. Fidelo, we don't like to start picking too early, you know. Uh, Fidelo is ready when we are still on holiday, which is a problem, <laughs> you know. Um, so no, so that that is the one grape that's a little bit earlier than the rest, but you know the all the grapes because we've planted the vineyards now interplanted, 
we don't really notice um, we don't really notice the, the big differences um, in the in the grape because we're farming the vineyards. Not we're not farming the, the varietals anymore. In the past we were farming the varietals. But now we are farming the vineyards and there's a mixture of varietals in the vineyards. Um, but I, I really enjoy uh, the Grenache, the Grenache Gris and Grenache Blanc. They are fantastic. Uh, obviously Grenache Noir as well. It's the, it's the grape that listens the best. It listens not, 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 not to the farmer or, or, or to the, to the winemaking, but it listens to to the to where it is and, and to the soils that it is in, um, yeah. So fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So I suggest that we move to the reds now. So, um, by the way, guys, if we, if you have any questions, either use the chat room or or feel even free to unmute yourself and and speak up. So, so. I, I really love the, the Dasi Cop. It's, uh, I, I still have a little bit left here in the library. And it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a three golden tears um, every time I have it. So it's, uh, so, so uh, by the way, on, on, on Good Hope, we will have uh, the latest vintage of Dasi Cop, so the 219. So as you can see, this is a, a wine that ages fantastically well, and even the the 15 that we're drinking now is still is still on the young side and has, still has a lot to give in the coming years. So um, we're going to start with the reds. We're going to start with the with the family red. Uh, yeah. The family red is is again a, a blend of of many different red varieties, red grapes that you have on the farm and around the farm. Yeah, so, so Rafi, the, this wine um, also, you know, is, is a similar uh, philosophy to the, to the, to the white. Um, it has changed slightly uh, throughout the years as the vineyards mature or change. Um, but it is mainly, and, and it's also a co-fermentation. Uh, 2016 is remarkably fresh at this stage. I think it's got a got a long, long way to go in 2016. Very, very fresh wine, nice tannins. Um, but it's also Shiraz based. Um, normally, around about 40% of the wine is Shiraz. I mean, it depends on the vintage, but around about 40 to 50% is, 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 is Syrah. And the rest is Sinso, uh, Grenache, um, Tinta Barocca. Um, there has been now recently a little bit of Mouvet uh, into the wine and a little bit of Toriga. Uh, so, you know, people say, why do you blend? You know, you've got these amazing grapes, the Syrah, Grenache, and Sinso on granite soils, these are perfect together, old vines, amazing. Why do you bring something like Tinta Barocca into the wine? And, um, you know, where we are, Rafi, you know that um, it's Mediterranean. Uh, we've got, uh, it's warm, dry summers here. We've got wines with, with, with low acidity. And um, at the time of picking this, uh, the Tinta Barocca is like the Cunoise of the Swartland for me. This is the Cunoise, which gives it that, 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 that explosion of, of, of freshness, of red fruit and the tannin. Uh, so the Tinta is very important in this, in, in, in this wine normally. Um, but, um, you know, the big thing is, is just that, it, that, it, that it's co-fermented from the beginning. We pick this vineyard, it's nine, nine different vineyards. And this we pick in one day, all these grapes together, and we make the blend in the tanks during the fermentation. Uh, okay. And age, and, in, uh, age in concrete tank and, 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 and food drip before bottling. Very, very simple. Can I interject here? Uh, no. Who are you? 
I'm just Manir, Mr. Shaw. I just I drove through the traffic in Paris from the 15th uh, and got here just in time for the, the, the third white. So good to see you, mate, and good to see everyone. I was wondering about the Cunois because uh, I know Eben's planted a little bit more and I, I see it planted uh, Richaud in um, the, the Rhone Valley and Kiran has planted a lot more to keep the, the alcohol levels down in, in the wines. But is it something that you will probably, we'll probably see a lot more of with this, this, this variety, do you think, uh, Cunois? It's, it's... Yeah, David, you know, we've, we've planted a bit. Um... And, you know, for, for us, um, with, with, with alcohol, um, we, we, we just pick earlier. You know, I've started picking much earlier, but it, you must remember it's difficult to pick these five grape, nine vineyards together to get an alcohol of 13.5, 13.8, which is for me a good balance. Um, but we try and, and we generally do that correctly. But we just pick a little bit earlier. We're not picking anything that is super ripe or super green. Yeah. Uh, we are not picking at the, the precise phenolic ripeness of these grapes. You know, if, you, if, if I were a Bordeaux producer, I would be analyzing phenolics, acidities, sugar loading, you know, seed colors. I'd be doing a lot of analysis to get the perfect physiological ripeness. But I work on psychological ripeness. Um, we pick when the when there's still uh, a liveliness in the fruit, mm. when, the, when the flavors are not dark and black and prune. We pick on the other spectrum when there's when there's raspberries, but 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 juiciness, but not ripe, not overripe. Um, but these varietals are going to help in the in the next couple of years. Of course, they're going to help a lot um, with winemakers, guys that uh, that are looking for a bit more freshness and acidity, but but to pick a little bit riper. Um, but we we just pick um, a little bit earlier, and we end up normally with a, with a nice balance. You know, our wines aren't like pretty. You know, this has got a lot of tannin. It's whole bunches. It's tannic. It's a long time in the skins, um, but it but it's a kind of style that <laughs> that we like. Um, Me too. And it, and, it, and it, yeah, it, yeah some, some people you know, um, and it spends a long time. Uh, Rafi also on on skins after fermentation. You know, you, you know we we keep some of the some of the tanks on for six months or to eight months after. Um, fermentation on the skins to get really good, solid, um, uh, stable tannin. Because um, it just goes into old barrels and, and concrete. There's there's no new oak and tannin, of new oak tannin to support that. We've got the tannin from the seeds, uh, which is very stable and, and very nice uh, to work with. Um, yeah, that's that that that's how we approach these wines. Fantastic. Moving to the second red, it's the, um, the Ramnas Hras. Yeah, uh, stupid, stupid names, Rafi, I'm sorry. Um, no, it's fantastic. It's great uh, marketing. It's, uh, <laughs> so these, these, these are two vignettes, uh, the Ramnas Hras, it's a, it's a, it's a type of, uh, um, it's a, a mustard that grows in the, in the vineyards, wild flowers, yellow, yellow flowers. It's a wild mustard. Um, and this vineyard was planted in, in 1963 and um, we've made this vineyard roughly for the first time in uh, 2011. We, we bottled a little bit on its own um, and it's Sinso. Sinso is a grape that, uh, that, was, that has been ignored throughout the world. There's a revival now in uh, in Chile, there's a big revival, you know, in the, in the Tata Valley, guys are making incredible uh, sinsos. And in South Africa, it's also having a big, big revival. Um, but uh, to make really uh, impressive uh, uh, sinsos, I think the vineyards must be quite old um, and uh, the winemaking must be quite sensible. 
Um, and then you can make, make wines like these that have got a nice transparency of tannin, nice depth, um, and that can age fantastically. This wine can really, it's, it's light in color, it's, but it's got amazing fruit and that can age fantastically. This is, the only, this is the only single vineyard that we make enough of that we can keep back for later release. So we are now re-releasing uh, 2014 and 2015. Uh, you know, just, just 160 bottles of that, re-releasing that, and it's just incredible. So the 20, 2017 that you've got now, still very, very young. I would, I would keep it for a, for a couple of years more, definitely. Um, it's only going to get better because these wines are, they go from tank, a fermentation tank, to maturation tank, and they bottle, and they're very tight, and they're very, they can be quite brooding. Um, but they age fantastically. And of course, all granitic swells as well. Um, simple, a good farming, very good farming, but uh, very uh, simple winemaking. Indeed. So, so just for for uh, for the group, I think it's it's uh, I think it's interesting the story of Sinso in in South Africa, because here, um, Sinso we, we basically have it, let's say, mostly in the Languedoc to to simplify yeah. things. Yes. But but in in South Africa, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's right after the phylloxera, a lot of sinso was planted, right? At the beginning of the 20th century. That's correct, Raphael. A lot of sinso was planted and um, it was called uh, Hermitage. They called it Hermitage. Um, so in South Africa, sinso is known as Hermitage. And um, obviously we're not allowed to use that name. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, but here, so here the farmers call it Hermi Taik. Hermi Taik. Because they couldn't pronounce Taj, so they call it Taik. So, but it, 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 it has been, a, it's been like Shannon Blanc, the workhorse grape in South Africa. And it does very, very well here in the Swartland, in this Mediterranean climate. All the berry, all the grapes that have got big berries do very, very well here where, where we are. They crop nicely. Um, since it can be quite difficult to farm, uh, crop control, and you've got to be quite uh, precise uh, with that. Um, but it, it, it was widely planted. But what happened was, um, you know, when, you know, in the 70s and, and 80s, you know, a lot of Shiraz was planted, a lot more Cabernet and Merlot. And so people forgot about Sinsa. It was like that. Um, like your brother that ends up in jail, you know, for stealing a bread, <laughs> and, they put him, and they put him in jail for stealing for stealing one bread. They put him in jail. That was Sinso was like, you know, and um, you know you, when 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 winemakers when they when they made wines, they knew there was Sinso, um, but uh, like that family member in jail, you don't talk about him. You still love him. But you don't you don't talk about it, and it's only been in the last ten years um, that winemakers have once again discovered how amazing this grape is and how incredibly well it can age. You know, roughly behind you is that bottle of of Libertas Chateau Libertas. Um, yeah. No, that that that's got a, a good amount of Sinso in it, and those wines. I mean, I don't know if you've tasted the wines from the thirties and the forties from from Libertas. They're incredible, you know. It's a grape that can can age very, very well, very well. It's a, it's it, it's a, it's very surprising how it, how it can age in terms of its color and its big berries, but it's just got this amazing longevity of fruit. Yeah, it's uh, it's Senso is indeed associated to a lot of the store of the history of South Africa. I mean, obviously, it also gave birth uh, when it. Uh, Copulated with Pinot Noir to give birth to Pinotage. Pinotage, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and uh, I've heard many farmers, the old generation, uh, not your generation, but I've heard this saying in South Africa where they say, "Make no mistake with Hermitage." Yeah, you make no mistakes with Hermitage. Yeah, we, you yeah. know, we, 
We are planting more, um, how do we go, more sinso this year. We're planting another three hectares of, of, of sinso. Amongst, you know, the shenan that we plant, we're planting more shenan blank this year and, and a few other white varietals. Uh, but sinso is one of the grapes that, uh, that we really love and it does so well here in, uh, in the Swartland. Is that Masao clone? Is that Masao like uh, field grafting uh, or, or from nurseries that are, that are doing in production at the minute, Adi? Was it from uh, older vineyards that you've, we know, you, you know the ones, but. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, so David, quite, quite amazingly, um, last year, well, not last year, and uh, four years ago, we had um, uh, guys from, from France coming over here. Um, um, I don't know what the English word is. Ampelograph? Is it Ampelograph? Yeah, Ampelograph, yeah. Is that what, what's the English word? Yeah. And um, so we had these guys come to South Africa going through our Shannon vineyards and identifying plants. Because what's happened in France, the, the diversity of Shannon Blanc has decreased. There's, there, there's no diversity that's been planted from nurseries. Guys talk about Messel, but it doesn't really happen. So they've come to South Africa to gather and get more genetic diversity and take it back to France. Um, and the sinsa that we're planting is mesal selection from our own vines, from six vines that we've had cleaned up from virus. So it's taken a long time to have them cleaned, but it's a proper mesal selection from six plants um, on our property. And we've done the same with Grenache and of course the same with Shannon Blanc. Um, yeah, so it is a mesal selection. I mean, it's probably, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's a nice clone, you know, <laughs> hopefully it works, you know, hopefully it's not shit. So, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll be able to tell you in, in 10 years time, whether it's, uh, whether it's worked, you know. Look forward to that. Yeah. And it's, um, so to, to all of you who are listening, it's, uh, you, you will see on, on Good Hope, uh, there will be a quite uh, large section of Sinso uh, bottlings. Um, I think uh, I have right now something like eight or nine 100% uh, Sinso bottles on, on the website. Uh, I think this, this uh, we call it the new wave or the new, the revolutionaries or the, the new generation got interested into it. But I mm -hmm. think it's the whole industry now that it's interested into it. We see a lot of, I would say, renowned um, you know, old school wineries as well, starting to rediscover the beauty of Sinso and, and what it can yeah. provide. Yeah, Rafi, I'm, I'm going to be um, in the next couple of weeks uh, posting a lot of uh, stuff on Instagram, just, just the different Sinso vineyards that we're working with um, and, and the Grenache and the single vineyards. So, but you, you've got my Instagram thing that's Vain Befork. Um, yeah, we, we've seen you uh, walking around with the horse today, so... I don't know, but listen, no, that, like, the horse is just for the, for the trees, huh? it's not for vineyards. <laughs> we don't, we don't <laughs> plant vineyards, no, 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 please. <laughs> we, don't, we don't disturb our soil in the vineyards. <laughs> the horse is for the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, horse, the horse is for the vegetables, not, 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 not for the vineyards. That's good, yeah. No. So uh, it's... Um, so Sinso, how, how what's what's the size of your Sinso uh, plantation? I mean, the, in terms of hectares, is how it's how not, big or small is it? Rafi, it it's not enough. Huh? It's not, not enough. enough. This this vineyard, the Ram Nas Fas, is about six thousand four hundred vines. So two point yeah. two point one two point two hectares. But as I said, we're we planting more. Um, we're going to be planting more soon, more sun so and more shannon and the various other grapes. So you actually have another Sinso single vineyard. Uh, yeah. So there is the Ramnas grass that we're tasting, but there's also the Ring Mur. Yeah, is well, that yeah Ring Mur is 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 uh, Le Clos. It's like a, it's in a wall, the vineyard. But we can't use the word Le Clos because some, some French guy, I think Vincent uh, Carême, has got the name. Um, <laughs> but uh, look, that is, a, that is a tiny vineyard, you know. That's only 800 kilograms of grapes, 900 kilograms of grapes. So we only make 
500 liters, one, one, one 500 liter cask. Yeah. Uh, and, but, but that is, you know, it, it's, it, it's in so, but it's fermented carbonically. So it's, it, it's like a lot of winemaking, uh, in, uh, you know what I mean? Carbonic is carbonic, carbonic, you know, but it's such a small amount that we just put it into a small concrete tank and leave it for two months, um, let it ferment and then put it into, into cask. Very, very light, so amazing fruit and perfume. Uh, Sinsa does very, very well with carbonic. Um, yeah. And, and, and obviously we're talking about the single vineyards here in Sinso, but uh, Secateur, your entry level wine, uh, also over time has shifted from uh, Shiraz based to Sinso based, right? Yeah, but let me tell but. you, <laughs> but it's going to shift back to Shiraz based. Because <laughs> <laughs> you need the Sinso grapes. No, we've, uh, I bought I bought another piece of land, uh, Rafi. <laughs> I bought another um, uh, forty hectares of, of, of land, and there's twenty eight hectares of vineyard on it, and there's a lot there's a lot of Shiraz, uh, amazing Shiraz. Um, a lot of the a lot of the top winemakers in South Africa buy 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 the grapes from us, um, so we'll have a little bit more more Shiraz <laughs> in the second years again. That's you good. Know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's uh, your 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 U.S. importer will be happy then. <laughs> Listen, I, I hope somebody will be happy, you know, because uh, I'm a very poor businessman, like with, with plans and stuff. I've got no um, vision, you know. Um, but so we we just make you know the wine of the grapes that we've got, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, okay, so. Um, we move to the to the next one to the to the I would say to the statesman or the queen of your of your farm, uh, this uh, famous uh, Reichras vineyard, which is uh, or we uh, believe it is the oldest Grenache in South Africa. Correct? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, it is the oldest Grenache vineyard in South Africa. Um, planted in nine. Look, and not not very old. I mean, there's. It's planted in 1951 or 52, you know, so it's not, it's what, 70 years old, which is old, but it's, you know, it, in, in the world of, of old vines, it's still very young. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's 1,246 plants, vines in this vineyard. Um, and, you know, I spoke earlier about Grenache, um, how, how Grenache is really, you know, the grape that, that listens very well to the soil where it's planted. There's amazing granitic tannin on this wine. You know, when I taste this wine, I, I know that it's, that it's Grenache and I know that it's granite, definitely. Um, and on the nose, it's got that wonderful, typical, elusive, blue fruit perfume uh, kind of notes to it um, of this vineyard and it's just a very amazing vineyard to work with you know it's a very big pleasure excuse me could i ask something to you please is the yes go ahead thanks is the elaboration the same because for me i in mouth i feel more wood and i don't know if it's only a question of perception a personal perception or the elaboration, it's not the same. Uh, you're talking about the élevage. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, the, the élevage on, on these two with the... Are you talking about the, the Sinso and the, and, and, and the Grenache? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so a bit for Grenache, in fact. More present. Yeah. So, so the Grenache is, is aged in... Because it's only uh, 1,000 litres. Oh, so it's okay. aged in two 500 liter vats, okay. whereas the, the Sinso is aged in a 4,000 liter vat. I can understand. Just together. So the wood does have a, a bit more of an impact, you know, the smaller oak on, on, on the volume of the wine. And it's very interesting, um, Sophia, with, with what we've done now from 2020 and 2021 is um, age 
both of these wines in, in, in concrete. And, uh, you know, we are getting amazing purity. Um, different, um, different development, of course, uh, from, from the concrete, but, but just amazing purity of the wine, but, but, but different to in the past. So, so for us, 2020, 21, and for the future, um, we're going to see a, probably a different definition in the wine on, on how the palate evolves in concrete and also how the aromas evolve. Um, but yeah, so there is, there is a big difference between the elevage and those two in, 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 the, in the past. But now from 20, you know, 2020, 21, it's going to be in concrete, which I think is for me um, a very nice way to go. We are moving away from big food. We are just using concrete tanks now. Um, and sometimes a little bit of uh, small barrels if, if the volume of, 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 the, of, of the tank is, is not working. You know, we can put a little bit into, into barrel. I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, that's perfect for me. Thanks to you, really. Okay, pleasure. What, one question I have for you is, uh, um, you would think that Grenache... Um, is perfect is a perfect match for South Africa and the Swartland specifically, but in my experience, there aren't that many either bottlings or plantings of Grenache. Is there a reason behind it? The the the, the Grenache never made it that far, or was it just a, uh, right, it a just, deliberate choice? Man, it was never planted yet. Mm. It was never planted. It was never popular. It was never recognized. You know, the fact that this vineyard still exists from 1950 is a pure miracle that this vineyard is, is, is where it is. You know, and, and it's, uh, you know, people say old vineyards are amazing, but some old vineyards are shit because they're not planted in the right place. But this yeah. is an old vineyard that just by chance was planted in the right place and it was the right grape. Um, but, you know, there's very little Grenache planted in South Africa, old Grenache. Uh, in the last five or ten years, of course, people have planted a lot of Grenache. Um, uh, but, but young vine Grenache and old vine, it's very different. It's much like Mourvedre yeah, Grenache. You know, for the first 20 years, you must make really nice rosé. Hmm. Um, and, and, then, and then you can make wine from it, you know? Yeah. I remember Eben once saying that uh, what is lacking for Grenache to be viable is, is a rosé culture uh, in South Africa. So, so, yeah. so it's, it's quite rare to come across Grenache bottlings. Uh, there is this one, there is Soldat, there is the work that Marilise does on, on Grenache and yeah. a, few, a few here and there, but it, it's quite hard to come across a Grenache from South Africa. No, 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 no it is certainly, certainly. But it, obviously it's more and more popular. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a grape that uh, it's very well suited to, to our climate, of course, and to where Marilise is in the, in the Overberg region. It's also well suited to that area. Um, and it's becoming more and more popular. Adi, do you, do you vinify more like a Pinot Noir? type um, wine, uh, you know, because I always view Grenache as a very feminine wine in terms of vinification. I mean, but obviously there's the Grenaches of the, the, the Southern Rhone, Chateau de Tour and uh, Pignon uh, Pialade, but, it, you know, obviously that's on sand, uh, some of the, the sandy soils of the, of the, the Southern Rhone there. But wow. obviously within, within your soils there, the framework is pretty much, uh, not, this is on granite, so is yeah, that a the way you vinify, or, or is, is that the, you know the obviously the elevage is important as well? Um, yeah, in the wine. You know, David, when you when you want to meet new people, if you move into a new town and you want to meet people, you need to go to the municipal swimming pool to meet people. Okay, um, in South Africa at least. But you don't arrive 
You don't arrive at the swimming pool and climb up on the high on the diving board and do the somersaults into the water. You go, you buy yourself a, a, a gelato or ice cream, and you go and sit at the shallow end with your feet in the water, uh, and you go in slowly and gently. That's that's how we make the Grenache. <laughs> we go in very gently. Um, it's the one, it's the one varietal that we actually destem by hand, and yeah, you know, we've got a destem in our wrist, but 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 we destem uh, into the tank, and uh, and it ferments. We don't do any pigeonage, we don't do any remontage. We splash with a bucket, literally a hundred liters over the tank once a day, and leave it like that. The the soils that we have got are are really decomposed sandy granites. And where this vineyard is, they, they're at about 1.8 meters, and then you hit the rock and the clay. The vines are big, um, but the, uh, the berries are medium size, uh, with, with, with nice tannin. We don't want to pick them too ripe. We don't want 14 and a half alcohol. We pick them when there's a bit of freshness, so that's why you get some of that nice tannin on the wine, and I think it's going to help the wine in the next five to ten years as it ages but we're really going very gently like like going to the swimming pool to meet new friends do you, in france you have to have a pair of speedos when you go to the swimming pool do you know that uh you, you can't wear shorts I, I tried to wear shorts there uh years ago in paris and i i i you said oh you have to wear a pair of speedos so i guess it's the same thing maybe you have to you know wear speedos as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but I, I just one last thing because I'm, I'm taking over this it, it, um, Mafia was with him uh, I think it was yesterday the day before the actual shout out to, to Hayas or the, the play on, on words here I'm not sure if uh, Rafi was going to mention that on, on the wine what, what's, that, what's that all about Rafi the, so, so yeah, there's obviously here a, a reference of some sort, or maybe an intended pun on. So, Raichras means uh, it's the name Reich. of a, a grass, right? Yeah, Raichras. Look, it just sounds like Raichras, but I mean, you know, we are just we are just uh, making Grenache, you know. Not. Yeah. I, I can't afford a Raichras, you know. I've never tasted it. I've heard about it. I've read about it. Well, you well, tasted it in 2014 at the Swartland Revolution. That was the last <laughs> No, but I have tasted it. <laughs> uh, this, this, this is not like a... Yeah. So, um, by the way, it, it's uh, we don't have it here on this tasting, but in your red single vineyards, you also have a Pinot Noir. Where, where is that growing? Is that in the Swartland? Have we lost the connection there, or? Hello? Can you guys hear me, or? I can hear you. Okay, and maybe we lost Andy or can hear you. We can hear you. We lost Eddie. Yeah, we, we lost Eddie for, for a reason. Okay, we'll just wait for him to reconnect. Est-ce que uh, on peut repasser en français? Est-ce qu'il est qu y a des questions dans la salle, comme on dit? Uh... <laughs> N'hésitez pas si vous avez des questions, même en français, il n'y a pas de souci. Attendez, il y a Adi qui se reconnecte. Il 
On n'a pas, est... pas de questions. Nous, de notre côté, on n'a pas de questions. On a des remerciements à, à Good Wine et à Good Hope euh, pour cette super soirée. C est, c est ce qu'on dégoûte et ce, enfin, ce qu'on goûte là est absolument magnifique. Le cinceau est superbe, le grenache est absolument magnifique. Uh, Raphaël, can you hear me? Yes, you're back now. Oh, sorry, man. The, the power came on again. So, fuck, I, I don't know. <laughs> This is Africa, man. Indeed, indeed. So, so um, yeah, just before we lost you, I had a question on your single vineyards, uh, on the reds. Um, you also have now a Pinot Noir single vineyard? Uh, but, yeah, but we're stopping that. Okay. My wife said I must be more focused. Okay. <laughs> but was it, was it Pinot Noir from the Swartland or was it from somewhere uh, else? Uh, uh, Of course not. No, it was Pinot Noir from high altitude vineyards in 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 Ceres. In Ceres, um, yeah. There is a single vineyard, uh, Tinta Barocca, as well. We do a single vineyard, uh, Tinta Barocca, um, and uh, I, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. So one interesting thing with you, Adi, is uh, th thanks again for, for all those wines, the, the three whites and the three reds, but uh, you also usually always have uh, some side projects going on, which, uh, yeah. which is always hard to keep track of. So the, the most famous one is, is Caperitif. Is the Caperitif, yeah. So what, what, what's, what's the story? It's... Uh, Uh, it's, well, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a vermouth like uh, but based on Chenin, right? A vermouth like based on Chenin and Muscat de Frontenac, or white muscadel, um, infused with herbs, spices, bitters, a lot of fruit. Um, and it's based on a very old, uh, a very old brand called Caperitif that was made here in South Africa in the early 1900s. Huh? And uh, so we started making it again, and it's it's absolutely delicious. It's really delicious. Uh, we like it very much. Um, we're doing a red version and a dry version, but that's it there. Um, I see you've got the old uh, bottlings, uh, Rafi. Yeah, this is uh, lot number seven that I'm running with. Mm. So we have lot eight. In, so it's yeah. aged in Solera. It's aged in a, in a Solera system and then, then bottled. Um, you know what, what you haven't seen yet um, and, and what we're busy with now is a, is a very, very exciting um, sherry project. You know, South Africa used to make millions of liters of Fino and uh, Amontillado, Amon, uh, um, Olorosa style sherries. So we are, starting, we are starting a, a new Solera Uh, here in the Swatland, um, using uh, Palomino and Shannon Blanc as, 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 as base. Um, and um, yeah, then, you know, we do the, the mezcal that's behind you there. No, don't joke. Really? That's <laughs> interesting. I'm sorry for uh, have this kind of reaction, but I like the Heidi. The, the what? I What? like the Heidi, really. I'm surprised, but I like the Heidi. I think yeah, so, so, yeah, look, you know, um, Sophia, what, what, the, what the thing is in South Africa is that, um, you know, I've got people that work, work on the farm, and um, we've got 26 people that work here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, vineyard work is seasonal, of course. Um, but we need to create work throughout the year uh, for, for my people because, you know, you need to eat every day, you know. Um, and so that's why we do stuff like, like the, 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 the mezcal and the sherry projects now and the, and the vermouth and, you know, things like that and, and, and farming with, with, with vegetables and capers just to, just to create uh, employment, you know, for the, for the people that... Because it's, it's amazing that every one person that we employ, that one person feeds on average between four and six people are reliant on one salary. So if you help 25 people, you know, you end up helping 150 people potentially. 
to eat and to survive and to go to school and to to live you know so it's very important for us you know people say are you organic are you biodynamic are you uh this that firstly we are um financially sustainable and then we are socially sustainable and then environmentally and socially you know so 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 it's a different pyramid we work to at the moment when we've made a lot of money and everybody is happy and then we can change that maybe that that needs but at the moment the most important thing is to create um uh, uh, cash inflow and to create work and you can only you know the two go hand in hand yes i understand perfectly and in this way have you a project with gene gene you can do everything with it you can put also i don't know i i, I asked the question i test an amazonian gene last week and it was incredible something very special and i yeah. think in your area you could have a lot of vegetable or something like this putting in it and it's one of the easier spirit for putting some yes. ingredient in it and do something very special no it, it 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 is the only problem is that it is very easy yes it, it it's too easy yes do you think so yeah oh uh, what, what what is very difficult Mm. is to make uh, mezcal tequila yes it's very For it's sure. a lot labor. of work a yeah. lot of labor and 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 so that that's what we need stuff that creates work and that's hard and it's difficult and re requires physical labor mm. um and you need a lot of people you know to 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 pick to harvest the, the agave plants is it's terrible work and it's hard and it's um, they come from south africa so yeah, they come from, from South Africa, yes. Yeah, yeah. We cook underground for two weeks mm -hmm. in a big oven and then we, we, we crush and do the fermentation and distillation. And Yeah, we are just learning. I mean, I, I, I've never been to Mexico, but, uh, but, I, but I've got a telephone. Uh, so I've got YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, so I've got YouTube and uh, oh, let me just put this along. Oh, there we go. Shit, hang on. Oh, there we go. So I've got uh, yeah. So we've got a lot of different projects, which is which is exciting, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think we're coming towards the end of of this session. I just want to thank everyone. If if there are any questions, feel free to use the chat room. I yeah. also see that some guy called Vincent Karem connected. So uh, we, we, we talked a lot about Vincent <laughs> earlier on. Uh, feel, feel free to say a word, Vincent, if you want. Uh, uh, Adi is stuck in, in Eben's farm because he ran out of electricity in his. So. Ah, merde, pardon. <laughs> Oui, on t'entend, Vincent, vas-y. Sorry. How are you? What's happening? Hello, guys. How's it going? Jean-Louis, how are you? Very busy. Yeah, I can see. Oh. Yo, the man has got big. Very busy. Yeah, how are you guys? So for, for those of you who don't know, Vincent is, uh, is a vigneron in, uh, in Vouvray and he also makes uh, wine in South Africa. It's called Terre Brûlée and uh, uh, there's a big uh, South African or Vouvray connection going back and oh. forth here, built oh. on friendship <laughs> and Chenin Blanc. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, um, and cheap cigarettes. And cheap cigarettes. <laughs> hey, but Rafi, thanks so much for uh, for for organizing this, and I hope um, I hope the wines were okay because I mean it's difficult to to taste in the small bottles, and you know it's very difficult. But uh, you know, if there are any questions, um, the guys can just uh, message me on Instagram on on Fein Perfok. Uh, on Instagram, if they've got any questions and stuff, it's, it's much easier for me to do it on Instagram. 
um, than WhatsApp and that, that kind of stuff. But uh, but thank you so much. And uh, you're going live tonight, huh? So yeah, that's um, that's my little announcement here. Is uh, thanks everyone for 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 uh, doing this tasting with us. I cannot wait for the day where we'll be able to do this face to face in in Paris or or in the Swartland. Uh, today is a special day also because we we are officially launching Good Hope tonight. Uh, it's not yet open to the all the French public, but uh, you have a password to get in. Uh, it's all supposed to be working, so feel free to try it out. If you see any spelling mistakes or credit card not working or whatever, just let me know. But the, the secret password to get in for the next 24 hours is Badenhorst uh, with, a, uh, with a capital B. And uh, tomorrow uh, it will just go completely public. So this is a, a special gift to all of you who attended this call. You can... You can be the first one to walk around the shop, sort of, and um, and and see what's there. Feel free to send me any feedback, uh, whatever you you like or don't like. Um, as you know, the uh, the idea with Good Hope is to to bring you the best of South Africa to France, um, virtually for now, and hopefully face to face, as we said. And we are going to have a lot of those events as well. Uh, looking forward to do a braai on the streets of Paris. For now, it's all just Zoom. Um, and actually, next month, one month from now, we've got this big, tall guy with a tenor soprano voice joining us on the 24th of June, Peter Allen uh, Finlayson, uh, also known as Finn, uh, is going to join us. Uh, so next month, we'll drink a little bit more of those little bottles. And this time it will be uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, you know, fancy stuff uh, from Burgundy and, and Hemel and Arda type. So on the 24th of June, same format, uh, there'll be some information going out. But Peter Allen, who's uh, usually quite shy on those things, has accepted to do a, a virtual wine tasting as well. So we'll meet again July and August. This is France, so nobody's around. And we'll resume the tastings in, in September with uh, someone to be announced soon. So so um, if there are any last minute questions, feel free. If not, just send me a message, whatever social network you use, or feel free to connect with uh, with Adi on, on Instagram. I think that's the best platform to reach him. Uh, don't try email or anything like that. Uh, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Adi, for your time. I, I hope you can. Uh, I hope there's no lockdown. You can walk back to your farm. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go finish, uh, have a drink with Evan, and uh, and then get back to my place. But thanks very much, Rafi, and uh, obviously everybody uh, that joined. David, nice to see you again, obviously, and uh, oh, Vincent. I don't know what's happened to him. He's. I don't know. He's really useless with technology but but yeah really really nice Rafi thanks very much and, and, and best of luck I hope it goes very well <laughs>